This is Stephanie Carrer. You are watching the Keith Andrew Network. gentlemen and welcome to the key fans network this is episode 628 that's right you're watching 628 i'm here with the beautiful and talented stephanie quivore i just want to say thank you for being a guest on my talk show thank you for having me keith no the honor's all mine for people who want to know what my talk show is about the whole point of my talk show is to show people that even with having a learning disability i can stay on mouth to something and at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of learning disabilities. Sorry, I'm trying to catch my breath. I was talking all, all day. <laughs> That's why it's hard. To, I used to do two interviews back to back. Now I'm like getting tired. Hey, I'm out of shape. <laughs> but the whole point of my talk show is to show people that even with having a learning disability, I can still amount to something. And at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of learning disabilities and disabilities to never give up and prove people wrong. Prove to them that labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be. You to prove to them still amount to something. So hashtag break the labels. And now for people who want to know what type of work you do, you used to live in Canada. But now you live in California. I'd like to talk to you about that. Yeah. And also you are a, I said you are a CEO. Is that true? Or are you just a lawyer? No, I'm a CEO. I run my own company, actually, a lifestyle brand that I just, that I'm working on launching. Oh, nice. I would love to work with you if that's a possibility. Yes, of course. Of course. But while on that subject, before we get to the hard-hitting ones, I want to ask you the fun ones first. So. Um, what what made you make the transition from going from Canada to California, and where where were you based in Canada? Well, uh, Keith, to answer your question, I'm I, my life has always actually been surrounded around the theme of evolution. So I've moved every four years of my life, and um, just for for some reason, for circumstances, you know, outside of my you know control, a lot of times. But um, sometimes now that I guess in my um, adult years, it's been a lot more my own decision. But every four years, I've I've have been given opportunities to move and to um, to explore different areas and everything. And I got a, a consulting a position with a software company in in the U.S. And so I thought this is a great opportunity, and I decided to come move down here. And it's been my dream to start this uh, lifestyle brand and have the little side project. So I thought, what a great opportunity to do that down here. And so no. here I am. Oh, absolutely, and I'm glad you are. So my first question I was going to ask you is when you were in college, were you a study nerd or party animal? And what were some of your favorite sports and what did you major in? Hmm, so I would say at the beginning, for the first year or two, I was a party animal. Um, I was, my parents were very strict, so I wasn't allowed to do much. Um, so for the first, I guess, two years of university, I, I was having fun. Um, and then after that, I buckled down and, and studied hard. Um, and the second question, what was my favorite sport? Yes. Uh, favorite sport, volleyball. Um, I love to play volleyball. If you're talking about sports I love to play, is uh, volleyball, um, tennis. I love watching football. What was American one? football. <laughs> oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. I said I love watching American football. What's the difference between American football and Canadian football? Well, I guess soccer, right? So in England, they, there's football is called the American, you know, fake skin, and the other one's a soccer ball. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Actually, you're all right about that. In, in England, they do refer to football as soccer. But yeah. now, I'm not really sure about Canada. I think it's still football. 
Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, in, in Canada, it can go both ways. I guess it is American football as well. But sometimes you use the words interchangeably and just specifying here in case we have international listeners. That's true. I agree with that. And it's true. I do have, in, I hope I have international listeners. I did at one point. But I have interviewed people from Canada, England, Japan. That was a lot of fun. Had to get mm-hmm. up like nine in the morning for that one. Um, you know, let's see. America, Canada, England, Japan, Italy. Um, that's really about it. Um, well done. That's pretty good. You, you got you got the globe there <laughs> from all sides. I love it. That's amazing. Hey, absolutely. And the sky's the limit with you. <laughs> absolutely. And, you know, I don't mean to interrupt. You know, Skype has that little lag in there. No problem. But it's just like one of those things, like, I wanted to start small. I wanted to say, okay, only interview actors, all right? Then it's like, let's only do voiceover actors. Okay, that's fine. Then and that's kind of boring. Mm-hmm. But then yeah, I want I wanted to do you know actors, actresses, models, CEOs. Yeah, I just want to interview everyone, everyone. And you know, one thing that gets to me and kind of pisses me off, but I just. It's kind of relevant at this point because everyone keeps saying, you know, you have a talk show, but you don't always interview people with disabilities. All right, that's not really the point. I'm turning myself into an example saying, hey, look at this person with disabilities. Look at what he's able to accomplish. Mm -hmm. So you don't interview people with disabilities. And I'm like, you can't win with everyone. But yes, nope. I've interviewed actors, actresses, models, CEOs, professional wrestlers, people with disabilities, people without disabilities. I interviewed straights, I interviewed gays, I interviewed whites, blacks, Spanish, Asians. I interview everyone, for the most part. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I cover my basis, and for six and a half years, if I come across your profile, and I like your profile, and I like your picture. But like, you know what? I want to give you a chance. You look like someone I want to become friends with. I want to give you an opportunity to be on my show. So mm-hmm. I have to feel out the person to be like, you know what? I like meeting new people. I like giving people a chance. But at the same time, there's I mean, if you do that, it's not going to work out some of the times. Mm-hmm. So, so I'm very picky. But this is not about me. This is about you. So... The next question I was going to ask you is, Mm -hmm. what did you major in, and what made you start your own company? I majored in, well, in university, I majored in, um, I guess my undergrad, uh, in political science, and I minored in French, and then I went to law school. So, I got a law degree, (laughs) and that will be. Yeah, that's really cool. So... (laughs) Was there like a family member? Was there like an influence or a famous person? I know your friends was uh, Kansas Michelle. It was did she influence you at all, and in your career, or in actually, let me stay on the subject first about how did he become a lawyer, and we can answer the other question in a second after I rephrase it. Sure. So I um, I. Basically, ever since I was little, I always thought it would be an amazing um, experience to go and learn and study law. Um, But once I got into it, I realized that, you know what, this is not something that I want to go after for the rest of my life. Um, And there's so much more that I love to explore and give back and just really um, touch people and, and, and have a positive impact on people. So decided to shift gears. No, absolutely. And now the second part of that. Don't mind me when I don't do my interviews as a way. I kind of so my disability shows more, and I kind of have um, mental farts. <laughs> no worries, we all have mental farts. It's all good. That's <laughs> I true. Have all the time. Kind of goes with me having diarrhea of the mouth. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so the next question I was going to ask you about the shirt you're wearing is that your company? It is. And who influenced you to start it? Who influenced the start it? Well, there was, I can't say it's one point in my life where I thought, you know, this is going to start. It was a culmination of things. So being in um, the, the a law firm and being in that legal world where it's just very, you're, you're 
basically just surrounded by conflict and there's um, so much insecurity even in law school and just dealing with different sorts of people, um, I realized that the world really needs to be empowered to realize that they are enough to be equipped with tools to become the very best version of themselves. And I just thought the, the, the education system doesn't equip you with that. Even university, my undergrad and, and, and elementary school, you know, education system does not support you in, in, in your personal growth and in, um, you know, ensuring that you become the very best version of you. So I thought, you know what, I'll take it on myself to, you know, just it's, it's a big, big shoes that I want to fill. Um, but I'm taking baby steps and, and just trying to, you know, put the ripple out there and, and hopefully make a positive impact. If I make change one person's life or make one person happier, I feel that's been a success. So. No, I feel the same exact way. And I saw that we have a mutual acquaintance. Uh, mm -hmm. You were friends with Kansas Michelle and her husband. How did that come about, if you don't mind me for asking? Of course, not a problem. They're they're wonderful people. They are beautiful people. Um, I met them through um, through friends, actually. So just friends of friends, and, and that, that's how I know them. They're fantastic. Now, have they ever wanted to work with you, or have you ever wanted to work with them? I've actually, uh, Kenji is, has an amazing um, chiropractor, he's an amazing chiropractor, so he's the good chiropractor, um, he's a boss, I've, I've gone to him for adjustments before, definitely have, and he just bro broke the Guinness Book of World Record um, for strongest back, so the most weight deadlifted in 24 hours, it was an amazing experience to see him do that, and for to see Candice coaching him and really with him every every step of the way. It was incredible and inspirational. No, absolutely. I never met Kenzie, but I did introduce myself to him online. Never heard back, but I, you know he's really busy. And mm -hmm. Kansas, I met this past, I'll say, it is almost October, so I met Kansas this past April. I think it was April. You know, at RussellCon. You know, I mm -hmm. we took a picture together. I did send you an invite to like my fan page, or did mm -hmm. I? Actually, we I will definitely send you that. And it's a nice picture. She has her belt. I'm holding her belt, and we, we took some oh. funny pictures. And I said I would love to have you on the show, and you know, interviewing a good friend of hers. You know, maybe you can bump, put a good word in for her. Maybe like, hey, you should be on the Keith show. He's not like a creep or anything, but you would really enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be happy to ask her about it. I appreciate but I know it. But she's really, really busy, so I will, I will try and pass it on to her. No, absolutely. Now the next, I'm sorry, you had a brain fart. <laughs> like I said, when I don't do my interviews as a way, it, it shows more. People are like, "Oh, that's the reason you do the show is because you have a disability." I kind of like to hide my disability because this is therapy for myself and make myself a better person. Good for you. you. Know, and so it's kind of hard to explain. It's like a double-edged sword. Yes, this is about people's disabilities, but at the same time, I try to hold myself to a higher standard, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. But, of course, um, I, I would encourage you to embrace it. You know, it's a part of who you are, and there's there's nothing, like, I don't see any any anything wrong. I think a lot of it's in your head, to be honest. You're doing a great job. I should write a book about that. <laughs> yeah. That's so an amazing job. No, I appreciate it. And it, actually, okay. I usually say this for the second half, Bob. Let's have fun with it. Was there anything you wanted to ask me? Is there any projects that you're working on that you would like to promote? This is your time. This is my time? Well, what inspired you to, to do this? To do interviews and. Um, there's so many. I repeated myself like a broken record. Um, I wanted to use my brother for an inspiration. I wanted to use my dad for an inspiration. Long story short is I got tired of using my disability as a crutch. And people were always saying to me I was never going to amount to anything. And as everyone knows, you know, the last conversation I, I mentioned this on is I used to sit with my family and talk about this, you know, what I want to do with my life. My brother. I'm the youngest out of four brothers and one sister. So my mm -hmm. brother before me used to say, I don't know what to do with my life, you know, go talk to your other siblings, they point you in the direction. When I said, what about me? What about you? You don't shut up. 
you instigate, you're not qualified. Yeah, I do talk as my hands. You're not qualified, and you're not capable of doing anything. So I said, screw it. I'm going to create my own opportunity and show you, look at what I'm able to accomplish. Yeah, I read and learn at a fifth grade level. I never went to college, but I'm showing you, look at what I'm able to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Good for you. I love that. Well done. I'm really proud of you, man. That's so inspirational. <laughs> Really is Andrew, like Keith, Keith Andrew. I'm really, really proud of you for that. And and of course, like those things are never ever gauge or are indicators of one's success, you know. And and good for you for stepping out of your shell, pushing past your obstacles, you know, and and your own personal, you know, edges. That is amazing and inspirational, and, and I, I love that you keep shining and putting yourself out there. It's not an easy thing to do. I myself am working so hard trying to put myself out there, especially with the education that I've been given. It's just been something where I've, I've learned to just stay in my shell a lot more, but I'm trying to push myself to step out there, and you know, you can't, you can't create a ripple for positive change and influence in the world if you don't put yourself out there. So good on you for putting yourself out there. Good on you for telling those, showing those naysayers off. And a lot of people who honestly judge or have anything bad to say, they're usually empty inside. They usually have fear that is actually, or like, you know, they're just projecting what they're, what they are feeling inside for themselves. So you know, send them love and be like, I'm doing my own thing. <laughs> you know, I'm going to do my thing. Good on you, you know. So I'm, I'm sorry you had to hear that and you had to go through that. And I'm so grateful to have met you and um, to be um, that you've asked me to do this interview with you. And, and it's awesome. I'm super proud and super happy to be here. No, absolutely. And I don't want people to think this is like pity time was key for this is to keep show and this is all about me. No, this is pretty much interacting with the guests, interacting with the fan base. That's why we, I created another new show called Q&A. Q&A is just on Instagram for right now. And it's where I interact with your fan base, you interact with my fan base, and mm -hmm. our fan base gets to ask us questions and be more interactive. Of course, they can't do that right now. I mean, yeah, I mean, someone can write questions, I can read it on the air, but... Mm -hmm. I feel like if you do it in real time, it feels more legit. It feels more real. This mm -hmm. is just our time, but when we do the other show, it can open more doors. Mm -hmm. Good for you. That's amazing. <laughs> I know, absolutely. Now, the next question, I do want to talk to you about your company some more. It's, sure. well, actually, let me ask you in this point of view. Have you, besides me, have you ever worked with people with disabilities? And are you willing to work with people with disabilities? Um, I, well, great question. I've actually, I haven't even launched yet. So I haven't have been given the opportunity to do that. This is my first time actually really putting myself out there and doing an interview. So yes, I guess I could say yes. I, and, um, I, and yeah, of course I'm happy to work with, with people of, from all walks of life, disability, no disability, um, anything at all. I'm, I'm I don't discriminate in any shape or form. So what my lifestyle brand is, it's a one-stop shop for people to feel empowered and um, have the tools to make themselves the best version of themselves. So if you have, um, I don't know, videos that inspire or motivate, or if you have, or, or a, a person with disabilities has a blogs or um, anything like, you know, that's inspirational and helps lift people up, I'm happy to look at it. I'm actually... Uh, working with um, uh, this this one one girl actually she's she's bipolar um, and she's dealing with bipolar disorder um, and depression and and she's she's helping me um, with with writing so and she's an inspirational girl she's coming out with a book she's amazing um, so there's there's so many different um, opportunities out there and and I don't discriminate about who these that it comes from. So. You know, let me ask you about this, because this was my biggest mistake and that I'm still working on. Mm -hmm. you, you said he didn't want yet. So what was your very first step that you ever did? You know, do you think you need, like, a fan base? Is that, like, your number one goal, or is it establishing who you are, if people want to follow? 
Um, great question. Again, right now I'm just waiting for the website. Actually, that's, that's all it is. I just trying to build my website. Um, and I waited for my clothing design to come through. So I have one of the designs that's just come through, which is great. And now I just got to, um, I'm, I'm thinking of doing YouTube videos, starting doing that and creating the ripple and just, you know, taking it day by day. No, I agree. It's funny, you know, because that's the next question I'm going to ask you about social media, but I want to stay on the first one. Of is course. you know I do videos. If people don't, just some like them, some don't like them. But I'm going to save that part. Take a little pause on that. Save that for social media. But mm -hmm. what I found out was my biggest mistake was I should have did a I should have created a fan base in the very beginning. Mm -hmm. When I first started, I was just throwing shit against the wall, see what would stick. Oh, let's try this idea. Let's try that idea. And I was just randomly throwing myself out there. And after the fact, I said, okay, maybe now I should get to create a fan base. Looking back, I should have actually created the fan base first and then said, okay, first fan base, then the videos. Instead, I did everything backwards from videos and people were like, who the hell is this guy? to the fan base. So mm -hmm. my words of wisdom for anyone out there is, yes, create what you're passionate about, but make a solid foundation first and look up. Now, oh, um, could I ask you, how, how do you, what's, if you could go back, how would you build that fan base if it's not through videos? I would actually write up the message that I've been using right now and um, create a fan uh, a fan page. Um, I would have gone to Comic Cons and meeting greets like I've been doing, making mm -hmm. a solid foundation, introducing yourself, and then once you got like over a thousand people, then say, okay, here's our videos. Mm -hmm. Instead, I was saying, this is my video, this is my story. Then you fall into the trend of saying, you're just like everyone else. How are you going to stand out? Mm -hmm. If that makes any sense, I it it does it does. But I I I don't think you made a mistake. I think you did a great job. That's my personal opinion. I think you did a great job. I think that's how it's done. Because even if you go and you you know get a group of people together and you're and you tell them who you are, introduce yourself, which is fantastic to do. How are you how are you gonna get them to, you know, follow you if you're not providing any videos or any content? I I, I don't know. I I beg to differ. I think you did an amazing <laughs> job. I think you did a great job just starting with the videos and everything. And if anything you learned from that, right? Um, it's all a learning experience and, and you got to um, you know, sharpen sharpen that blade while you're doing it and get better at it um, as you do the interviews and progress and build your self confidence. So when people see when and now they've all come on and you've you've successfully built your fan base, they can see how amazing you look. No, absolutely. Now we're gonna take a quick uh, commercial break, and when we come back, I do want to talk to you about your company and social media. Sure. I'm Linda Collins. Hi, I'm Marissa Joy Davis. This is Michelle Wong. And I'm Nancy Rose. My name is Brandy Hunt. And Hello, my name is Raven Wynn. Hi there. My name is Giovanna Vidal. Hi, I'm Monica Thomas. Hi, I'm Paisley Blackburn. I'm Ashley Burgess. Hi, my name is Jeanette Abney. Hi, I'm Sharon Spank. Hey, this is Samantha Moore. Hi, I'm Melody Jones. Hi, my name is Becky Yee. Hi, you're watching the Keith Andrew Network. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to 628. I'm here with the talented and the beautiful Miss Stephanie. Now, with the last couple of minutes left, we're going to talk about your network, your company, and social media. So, as we were talking about making a fan base, you know, what is the next step for you? I know you have merchandise, as you're, you're wearing. You have a lot of great contact. You know... And that goes into the question of social media. Can social media make you or break you? And out of all the social medias out there, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, was is there one source that stands out out of all of them? Or do you think all of them really helps you get out there? 
I think all channels would possibly, you know, help you to get out there. Um, I personally am getting better at using Twitter um, and I'm going to start uh, putting posting videos on YouTube. So um, those are the two channels that I have not been putting any focus in and that I will be diverting my concentration and focus into. So um, I've been mainly, um, I guess, more active on Instagram. Um, but again, just stepping out of my shell, pushing past edges. And, and this is the year. So. No, absolutely, and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And the reason we react about social media, it, it took me six and a half years to get to the following I'm at now. Mm -hmm. But I will definitely send you a Facebook fan page, um, like and have Addy as a friend. And if you look at my fan page, it's right now over 1,200 likes and followers, it's over mm -hmm. the same thing, over a thousand. Um, Twitter's over a thousand. Let's see. Twitter's over a thousand. Facebook is over a thousand. Instagram's, you know, a fluxes. You know, I kind of Hulk Hogan, you know, fluxing his muscles and everything. <laughs> I see you're already a fan making a face again, not a Hulk Hogan fan. Yeah! <laughs> Hulk Hogan fan! <laughs> But, uh, you know, that's, uh, you know, because I don't know if it's real people or it's robots, but, you know, the number of fluxes, but that's over a thousand. The one that I don't understand is YouTube. And, like I said, I had Dumbo and Jumbo Buck, all the fan made parodies, and other, those get a lot of views. And he had so many interviews, and not a lot of people who I interview promote their episode, I really wish they actually would promote them. It's like one episode got over a thousand views. And mm -hmm. then I got my channel taken down because you know copyrights and all that BS. So I did it over. And I'm like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all these have over a thousand but yet YouTube it's it's not catching. It's so mm -hmm. the question I'm gonna pass over to you is is there any media that you use that you say you know what if it wasn't for this site i want to be doing what i'm doing no i can't say that at all to be honest with you i wish i could i again i'm 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 starting off so i i maybe ask me that question in a year from now <laughs> let's revisit that no absolutely we're gonna do like a one-year follow-up so you're <laughs> constantly cool. on Facebook, you're constantly on Twitter and Instagram, and so you interact with hundreds and thousands of people. I will. <laughs> I will. But at the moment, again, I've just launched this, um, so I, I haven't even really I put out the, the website yet. So I will say that it's very, very low right now. I'm not, I'm not really active on it at all, so... Hey, okay, well, my word of advice is come up with a great message and have a great website. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I like, start off small, like do like Facebook and have a message. And once you hit that thousand goal, I say, okay, next. And then you do the next one. You don't want to mm -hmm. set so many things up and one falls and then you have a domino effect. But yeah, you but just want to be very selective and strategic on what you do. Mm-hmm. No, I appreciate the advice. Thank you so much, Keith. No, absolutely. Now, it's the last five minutes left. I will pass the show over to you. Is there anything you wanted to know or anything you want to talk about? This is your time. Passing the show over to you. Mm, where do you see yourself in a year from now? It's funny because my goal, trying to find the words for it, my goal was a year ago to get on TV more. And I actually got my first TV appearance. I don't know if you gone to my website or actually seen the link on my Instagram. And mm -hmm. uh, but that link is actually to the very first episode I was interviewed on. It's Manhattan Neighborhood of Broadcasting. It's public access, but it was my very first TV interview. And a lot of people said, "Oh, it's great!" And you know, you, you kind of donald off a little being depressed, <laughs> being depressing. But it's your first interview and we're proud of you and, and if someone says same question what do you want next for you for the show it's I want I want this not this right here but 
being mm-hmm. in the studio. I want. I give you an example of what I'm talking about. When I first did my talk show, I did phone interviews, mm-hmm. and I was still having panic attacks. I'm like, this is ridiculous. I'm just talking on the phone, and I'm still having anxiety. So I did it over. Did 72 of those, and um, so I did it over. You know, season one. What you see on the camera, your reflection, mm-hmm. that's season one. Not the best quality, but mm-hmm. that is the, the quality you have for season one and season two. I did not want to be seen. Someone came across my brother and said, Oh, we came across your brother's uh, talk show page, and it's pretty interesting, but why is he hiding in a small corner? And then I was thinking, you know, if I really want to do this for the rest of my life, I'm going to do this until the day I die, I mm. need to make myself vulnerable. I need to make myself seen. Because you can't hide and become famous at the same time. If you want it, you are got to jump right into it. So oh, um, hey. recording like this to now cut in half, and one of my favorite softwares, it's Ecamm, E-C. A M M, and you know they have Facebook. Not Facebook. They, actually, yes, they do have Facebook Live Recorder, but they also have um, Skype Recorder. That's what I'm using right now. I think it's like thirty nine dollars. I don't know if there's like a promo going on, and there's mm-hmm. another one, uh, FaceTime Recorder. So you can either record from directly from Skype, or you can record directly from FaceTime. FaceTime I haven't mm-hmm. used in a while, so I prefer this one. But yeah, since you know, I think 2015, 2016, I've been using the Ecamm, and there's a big difference from you know phone interviews, from recording from this to mm-hmm. this, and actually getting mm-hmm. my first interview, you know, on TV, I'm like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life, and I'm mm-hmm. thinking. All right, well, this is therapy for myself. I'm helping me with my social skills. So I'm socially awkward. So it's just helping me with my confidence, not being socially awkward. It's giving me that boost. My next thing mm-hmm. I want is to get a studio so I can sit with you in person, sit mm-hmm. one-on-one and get that confidence saying, you know what, this is great that we're talking, but yet there's, you know, a dividing point because... I can't reach out and touch you, and you can reach out and touch me, not in that way, of course, because there is a computer screen. There's a wall there. But yes, we can see each other, but we can't physically... I can't reach out and grab that microphone, or you can't just knock this paper out of my hands. So if I want... My next thing is a studio. Get comfortable doing that on an everyday basis, interacting so I'm not so socially awkward, Again, build on that confidence and everything. No, good for you. And it's all about the energy, right? Because you can't really feel the other person's energy. I think that's what you're what you're trying to get at. But yes. I totally, I totally feel you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're wrapping up the show. We're gonna do a special Q and A right after this. But wrapping up, how can people follow you on social media? Are you on? Obviously, you're on Instagram. But I'm gonna ask you anyway. Are you on Instagram, Twitter? Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, or any other websites, but I did not mention. I sure am. I'm on Twitter. I'm on YouTube. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. It's all You're Beautiful, the label. Thank you. I am beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> you are. I try to have fun with everyone. I do that to customers, too. You know, I my brother calls me an asshole. Uh, but, okay, sometimes I am. I, I admit that. But I like having fun with people. And uh, this person, these two people would be having a conversation and looking at a baby picture. Or our dog, you bring a dog in. Oh, she's so beautiful. I'm like, thank you. Yes, I am. And they stop and look at out. <laughs> I just like messing with people. My dad's like, you know, you have a good knack at acting like there's something wrong with you. And my sister's like, yeah, just look in the mirror. He doesn't have to act. Oh, I know. <laughs> but, but, you know, it's that dry humor that it's kind of like, you know, what is it like the expression? Do you adapt the personality that you surround yourself with? So, yes, I'm not funny, but I'm sarcastic funny. 
but I try to have fun with everyone. Not everyone's going to think that's, you know, tolerable, but hey, it's not my job to please everyone. Like I said, I extend my hand to you in friendship. If you want nothing to deal with me, hey, I don't care if you're a friend or a family member, there's the door, leave, and I never want to see you again. And I'm not saying that to be funny or cute. If you're going to be negative, I don't want nothing to do with you. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that's not about me. This is not the pity show. But my last question for you, then we can do our Q&A. When I first approached you to be a guest on my talk show, what was your very first reaction to this letter? And uh, to email, actually. What was your very first reaction to the email? What made you say yes? And how do you feel now? And what do you recommend it to other people? I, when I first received the, the, um, the reach out, I thought it was awesome. I thought it was great. You told me about your background and everything. And I just thought this is awesome. It totally vibes with, um, what I stand for with your beautiful, the label and love to support what you're doing. And yeah, that's, that's, that's what I thought all positive and great. Yeah. Well, listen, you can be completely brutally honest. And I know a lot of people will be like, they got to email it. What the hell is this shit? <laughs> <laughs> and no, our day would sit. I thought it was very brave. I thought it was really brave. I thought it was awesome that you're putting yourself out there and reaching out, and that's that's how I viewed it. Unfortunately, I have gotten that too. People always say to me, you know, they say, what is this shit? Um, I thought it was spam. I thought it was like some robot program. Um, mm-hmm. I thought you were like a con artist. I think you're putting on on a front. And, but, you know, it's always good to be completely honest. And mm-hmm. it's like, I mean, yes, I message hundreds of people every day. Some people say that's spamming. But I try to network with people. Mm-hmm. I don't like rewriting the whole message over and over. I, you know, I type on the keyboard, blah, 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 I am this, send. Do it again. So I copy and paste the message. And if I find someone who I like, then I send it to them. And if I find someone else who I I'll give you an example. You, Kansas, Tristratus, Velvet Sky, a couple people in high school, people in college, uh, people who are athletes, people or normal people, people with disabilities. If I come across your profile, I don't care who you are, I'm going to send you the link and say, this is what I do. I'm extending my hand to you in friendship, and I want you to be a part of it. And people are like, well, you're spamming people. Well, maybe it is, and I do apologize for that. But how else do you network? Because I'm always on Instagram. I'm always on Facebook. Twitter, not so much, but Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. I'm always networking. And that's where most of my interviews came from, for the most part. But mm-hmm. anyway, you know, we can get to, to another time. Maybe our next interview will be in person if you ever come to New York. 100%. <laughs> But wrapping up our interview, passing the show over t- to you. When I first, actually you answered the question, but I want to ask you again because I rambled on. After everything you learned about me, what do you say to those people out there who are hesitant about being on the show? I know we talked about I really want Kansas Michelle on the show, and I introduced myself to her briefly. And Chris Stratus is another one who's supposed to be on the show. We're working on that. For people who are hesitant, and I understand why they're hesitant, because they don't know me for a hole in the wall. They think I'm going to use the interview, and I'm going to sell it, and i got to make money off their image. No, I'm not trying to get sued or anything. I like keeping my teeth in the mouth, so I don't want to be punched in the face or anything. I'm doing this because I like making new friends. It gives me confidence, and... This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. So new friends, confidence, and I'm making a message to show you that labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be. R- wrapping up on the last word, what would your advice to be, for example, Kansas? Well, what would you say to her and be like, you know, I think he's sweet, but I'm not really 100% solid behind him because I don't know if he's going to do anything stupid (laughs) but you know what is your honest opinion wrapping up 
Wrapping up, um, I I think that people are entitled to their opinions and people are entitled to their, you know, choice if they want to do something or not. But all I can speak to is myself. Um, personally, when I when I saw that, I told I thought um, when you reached out to me and I saw your message to me, I didn't see it as spam. I didn't see it as anything that was, you know, um, that caused any red flags for me to go up. Um, I just saw it as, you know, this is an awesome opportunity. This is someone who um, is completely stepping out of their shell and is trying to prove um, to the world that they are amazing, which they are. And and I'd love to support that. So that's 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 all. You know, I could just say what what I what I did and what I reached out. And um, it's, it's up to people if they if they choose to go forward or not. So that's that's my perspective. No, absolutely. Now we're gonna wrap up our segment so we can do a Q and A afterwards. But wrapping up the interview segment was a real honor and privilege having you as a guest, and I'm looking forward to part two down the road. I look forward to that as well. Thank you so much for having me, and it was great to meet you and and to talk to you as well.